Okay, today we're going to walk you through the uh, Garmin 800 how to find your power meter setup. So you've just fitted your power meter to your bike, now it's time to set the Garmin up to find the power meter uh, so that you can start training. So the first thing you need to do is you open up, turn your Garmin on, go into your menu screen, we select settings, bike settings, go into your bike profiles. Okay, in here, depending on how many bikes you have, uh, obviously you need to select the setup for whichever bike you're now looking at. We don't need to find satellites. In this case, we're just looking at bike one. Okay, so if the power isn't set up initially, when you select this button, all right, you'll see power meter is no, so you won't have had power before, so we need to tell the Garmin that it needs to look for a power meter. So we select yes. This now gives you your calibrate search and sensor de details options will come up. We need to press search. Now the Garmin's looking for power. Okay, your power meter will be detected. The thing to remember here is you need to wake your power meter up before you do this search. If the power meter is asleep, it's not going to find it. So just either spin your cranks or spin your wheel, depending on what type of power meter you have. Once it's found it, we go back into our power screen and we need to calibrate. Select calibrate. It's now looking for calibrating your power meter. It will come up with the number. This number will vary depending on what sort of power meter that you're using. Uh, it's a good idea to keep an eye on this number as you calibrate each day uh, to look for uh, any sort of large variations. But generally you should see the number should be pretty close each day. If you do get a large variation then you may have a problem with your power meter. We exit from that screen. Now if you need to search for and find your power meter at a race and there's lots of other power meters around you do have the option of entering in your sensor ID and that's how you find it. So that way you'll be able to get your Garmin to search for that specific power meter and it won't get interfered with other multiple sensors. Now that you have found your power meter, the next step is going to be to set up your training pages so that you can actually read your power. So you come all the way back to your setup page, you select your training pages, we select timer pages, we look at user defined. Here you'll have however many pages that are available. Uh, we recommend that you have one or two pages set up specifically for your training. Uh, the other three, four and five, six can be made up with whatever data that you like. But in terms of training with power, what we recommend is on page one, we like to have what we call a sort of our totals page. So the options you need to have there, you need to be reading your power at the top because that's your dominant uh, data that you'll be looking at. Other things we like to see, speed, that's optional. So a lot of people like to see speed. We also like to look at TSS, training stress score, and our intensity factor. You'll have a total time and a cadence. So if you're not sure how to change that, you just select which screen it is that you wish to update. You scroll down until you find power. Here you have the choices of what power you wish to see. So. You can either just pick the raw power data or you can also choose percentage of FTP. Which one you choose, generally it's up to you uh, which one you prefer. You can do that for all your pages on the screen. Just select the ones that you want. If we come out of that one and we want to have a look at page two. So what we recommend for page two is to do what we call an intervals page. So your front page is for handling just your total ride data, but now if you want to do some specific intervals, we want this page to be set up to record that specific interval data. So again, we've got our power at the top. Now we have a lap time as opposed to total time. You can have your normalized power for the lap, cadence, etc. cetera. Um, on this one, I've got heart rate and lap distance. The main thing here is rather than just looking at total data, we might be looking at sort of lap specific data. So if you're interested in your normalised power per lap, again scroll down to power. You can see what choices you have in terms of which one. So you've got power last lap, power normalised lap. You can select that and that will now show your normalised power whilst you're doing the lap. 
Once you're happy with that one, you can exit out. Again, your other pages can be set up however you like, um, but for the purposes of training with and using your power, how we sort of set up page one and two is a good place to start. Come back out. Now you're ready to go. Let's quickly walk through the apps and software that's potentially page that controls the kicker. So again, it will originally be...